30 minutes of football in the books. On a lovely day in Piscataway, New Jersey. Illinois up 7-0 over Rutgers here at halftime. Both of these teams today looking for their first wins in Big Ten play this year. Mike Cousins with Dan Hawkins. And well, through the first half, Hawk, what has jumped out to you off this stat sheet right now? Well, you, it's being played out exactly as these teams, their season is going exactly according to Hoyle. When you start looking at the turnovers, you look at the penalties, miscues in the red area, that's what plagues losing football teams, and that's been the curse for both of these teams here. Illinois, the most penalized team in the Big Ten. Averaging nine a game, and they've already got five for 55 in the first half, and Rutgers has turned it over a number of times. That's cost them. Got lucky on the punt. It was fumbled, but Illinois unable to capitalize. Now, this was not very good because you're inside the 10, chance to score points. Labiano gets stripped. Now it's fourth and two. Snap comes in uh, too quick, unable to handle it. No drive stalls, and then they're marching the ball again. A fumble scooped up. Again, they did. Illinois did not score on this drive. You can see the frustration. Coach Ash. That's a first-time starter for Chase Crouch, and Kendrick Foster has been a nice backfield mate. Done a nice job. They've moved the ball a little bit on the ground. Of course, the big, the big run or the big catch and run keyed this touchdown drive. And so far, that has been the game's only score. So nine rushes for 65 yards, coming off of a 16-carry, 55 performance with one score last week, continuing his momentum here today. This college football season, stream every game live on the ESPN app and on Watch ESPN. You can download the app or visit WatchESPN.com today. A missed field goal into the first half for Illinois, so they had a chance to make it 10-0, and they'll get the ball to start half number two and add to their lead. The second half, when we come back to High Point Solutions Stadium. Welcome back to the Big Ten on ESPN. Rutgers and Illinois at the half and a 7-0 lead for the Illini in a game that has not been conventionally exciting, but certainly intriguing. It's been like watching the three-day rise and fall of America's sweater vest champion, Ken Bone, this past week. It was captivating, and this game has been. 
seven nothing and chase crouch one interception one touchdown just a moment ago hawk here's him throwing on the sideline do you see something here that the conventional fan might not yeah, see i can tell right when he's throwing he's a right-handed guy he's drinking with his left hand he put his helmet on with his left hand and when he's throwing the ball there's just no sting there's no whip and just the way he's holding it there's no doubt in my mind yeah you want to play quarterback then one of the number one things you got to have is toughness He's showing his toughness, but I have no question in my mind that that shoulder's got a few issues. The backup is Jeff George Jr., the redshirt freshman from Indianapolis, whose dad, Jeff, played at Illinois 12 years in the NFL. And if you're wondering why we're talking about a third-string quarterback here and just past the midway point of the season, if you're getting to us late today, Wes Lunt. The starter who was proclaimed the starter earlier in the week by head coach Lovey Smith did not dress today. He was in a sweatsuit during warmups. He was knocked out of last week's game against Purdue in the second quarter at about the eight minute mark on a hit to the back from Purdue's Danny Easy Chuku. Monday and Tuesday, they weren't sure if he was going to play. And then Chase Crouch has been the only one to take snaps today for Illinois. Coach McGee, the offensive coordinator for Illinois, I asked him if Jeff George was solidly in the on-deck circle, and he said he was. Those who remember his dad remember he could flat out spin it. Arm strength was part of his attribute. David Bonagura gets his first chance at kicking anything today with Rutgers not having scored yet. And his kickoff is returned to the 23 yard line where it's first and 10 for Chase Crouch. And the one and four Illini, 0 oh and two in the Big Ten. Rutgers at two and four, having lost their last two games, 136 to nothing against Ohio State and Michigan. The Scarlet Knights are 0 oh and three in conference play. Can you please not use that term anymore? It just makes me shudder every time I hear those. Those numbers. I'll do my best to keep the Chicago Maroons reference squarely <laughs> in the on deck circle. Cumberland. <laughs> Good to tech fans thinking about that one. First down run to the 30 yard line is a pickup of seven for Illinois on first down. Hendrick Foster continues his momentum. From the first half where he went nine carries for 65 yards. Not a bunch of firepower, not a bunch of explosion plays in this game. There's been a few shots downfield by Rutgers and the one catch and run by Keyshawn Vaughn led to the first, the only touchdown for Illinois. Uh-oh. There's another telltale sign of what we may be thinking about with Chase Crouch. Yeah, what you see that? <laughs> he was going to block, and he said, I'll help you with my left shoulder a little bit, but I don't know that I'm going to be able to do much with my right shoulder. Probably one of the reasons you haven't seen many throws downfield. Third and two. If he's going to throw it, this is a spot where it would be easier than most times. Yeah, third and two. You got a good running game on. Stick right with it. And it's Corbin. He's got a hole to the right side. And he's got speed down the sideline. Corbin inside the 20. And finally raced down. A touchdown a saving tackle by Saquon Hampton. Hampton putting on the juice. Pop that initial line of scrimmage. Got clean. This uh, this offensive line for the Illini, pretty athletic, doing a good job with their feet. Ran that toss play a couple times in the first half. 53 yards for Corbin, the red shirt freshman out of Maryland. He doesn't even get a chance to catch his breath. They go right back to him, and he's wrapped up by Maddox Williams, the linebacker. Now first and goal, Illinois. 
This is one of the issues that plagues you when you when your team is struggling and your team is losing is you start losing focus and you lose belief and just doing your job and you see a little communication going on back there but you know, bad things happen and you look around and you wonder why and it just goes back to the fundamentals we talked about before a line assignment your technique. That's just lateral movement there. John Badeke moves across the line to help make the tackle on Corbin. Five plays on this drive for the Illini. All of them on the ground. Nick Allegretti trying to get out front. As we mentioned the first half, these guys block down and pull a lot. These linemen are asked to, to move a bunch. It's not a bunch of zone schemes. So unable to get the perimeter blocked by the pulling guard. Switch of tailback, Foster fumbled it at first in his hands and scores untouched. From five yards out, Foster is in to make it 13-0 Illinois. Big pile, yeah, I think there was a post and chop inside. Anthony Chaffee, the free safety, talking to the official afterwards and confluence of bodies there on the edge. Well, we've said it many times, Mike, that first series after the half, I think, determines a lot, and you come out and score on your first drive. It's a big statement maker. And they left nothing to the mind either. They didn't have to throw the ball. Sending it right into Rutgers' face to get the drive started. A lot of help from the line. Great blocking. Foster caps it off, 14-0. Kendrick Foster's touchdown run makes it 14 at nothing. Illinois with 11.48 left here in the third quarter as Rutgers has still been held off the scoreboard. And going back to the half, Rutgers has been held scoreless in a half for the sixth time of this year, most in FBS in the last 10 quarters. And the uphill climb gets a little bit steeper given what's coming into the game defensively. Carol Phillips. 
who leads the team with sacks and tackles for a loss. He's going to come right back to work after missing the first half due to a targeting call last week against Purdue. That was close there along the goal line. It was, but it was a great decision. A lot of times we've seen guys get confused. They want to go out. They yeah, want to go back not in. quite sure what they should do, but that was good decision making. So first down and 10 at the 25 coming up here for the Scarlet Knights. How can they turn things around here and get on the scoreboard? Huh? Dig down deep time without question. They have not been prolific throwing the football. That's obvious. They've done a nice job running the ball, but they've hurt themselves. And now they make a change at quarterback. Giovanni Rachino, the sophomore from Warren, Michigan, comes into the game, and this will be the first snap taken by somebody not named Chris Laviano today for Rutgers. Rashinho immediately sends it into the hands of Juwan Harris. Trying to use his speed to turn the edge. He does not have a lot of room to work with. Trying to throw a little spark. Changing up the quarterback. Fly sweep, something they do quite a bit in this offense. But again, as we mentioned in the first half, now you're behind the chains. Second 13. Right out of the gate, Rashinho. Nowhere to go, he lost the ball. Fortunately, he's got a teammate there to fall on it. J.J. Denman, the right tackle, was there to grab it after Dewan Smoot came around from the backside of the play to get the hit and knock it loose. Geo, 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 do not hesitate. Get rid of that football. Can't clutch. Not in scout team anymore. You got the big boys coming, little pump. Got to throw it on time. You don't like it, burn it. Throw it out of bounds. Wow, one hop and right into the right hand of Denman. Otherwise, Illinois was coming in hot. Third and 19. Keep it underneath. Keep Ulusino. it underneath. And that's going to go out of bounds. It's not surprising to see a different quarterback here, Hawk, for Rutgers. Because the last couple weeks, Laviano has come out. Allen played most of the final three quarters last week. Title and Olden, who's a freshman, played most of the final two quarters against Ohio State. So, like I said, the switch is not surprising, but more so that it's Rashino who's the guy who they go to first. Yeah, they're obviously trying to switch it up, trying to find something. When you're not doing well, the first thing that goes is your quarterback, second thing that goes is your coach. So, you got to kind of treat rolling it around till you find the, the magic formula. Rashino has played earlier this year against Howard. Ran for a touchdown early in the game, but has not played since. And his substitution does not solve the issue there for Rutgers either. After the punt, it'll be 53 yards away from the goal line for Illinois.
The Rutgers Scarlet Knights hoping to shoot this cannon off during the game here today. They do it after they score, and it's part of our backstage pass this week. Inside access around college football. During the pregame process, you'll hear this cannon go off a few times. Not only are the costumes legit to go with it, but so is the boom that resonates around this stadium. They only fire it off during the game after a score, and they're hoping to do that again today. Right now, Rutgers in search of Big Ten win number one this year. Down two touchdowns against Illinois. Defense needs a huge turnover, negative play. And the offense looking for a big one for Chase Krauts. He takes off from his own 47 and gets down to the 25-yard line there. A 28-yard run for Crouch. Yeah, that's a little bit more what they used against Purdue with some effectiveness is you bring an extra blocker outside at zone read, but you got a lead blocker outside. Rutgers needs to bring a little heat here. They need disruption. Get into the mesh point. They need a turnover desperately. Crouch was going into his slide, had not yet hit the deck there before he got clobbered by Deontay Williams, the middle linebacker. That was close. Again, you could see <laughs> Chase trying to protect himself a little bit, getting down. They get a little bit bigger here now, getting set up for second and ten with the fullback Nate Eckerd. In the formation to the right of Crouch. Going to the right side to set up a third down and three after the run by Foster. And it's been no secret off here these last couple drives. Run, run, run for Illinois. Yeah, we talked about that at the break. And, you know, Gary McGee here, the offensive corner for the Illini. I mean, you can't throw it. He's not making any secret of it. They are, they are in flat out run mode. Run with a quarterback. Use their skill guys carrying the football. They have not thrown it down the field one time. On third down and four. It's a stop short of the first down marker there. On the give to Foster. It'll be a right hash try for Chase McLaughlin. <laughs> it might be boring football to some, but it's smart football. I mean, Illinois is doing what they can do with what they've got right now. Trying to keep things positive, yardage-wise. Don't put yourself in a bad situation. Don't turn it over. They had a short field, got a couple first downs, and now they got a chance to get three. From 37. One's good. Now there was a question about how they use the time at the end of the first half. Lost a couple yards on a kneel down. This one close enough and good enough to make it 17 nothing.
Illinois already had a lead at the break, so coming back at halftime, they didn't have to do anything all too crazy to build on that lead. And with Crouch in the game, and we're not down on the sideline, we're not going to diagnose anything here, but his arm has not looked to you to be 100%. And so sticking with the running game, 10 plays, 10 carries on the ground. Been very effective. Two drive points. Two drives after the start, the second half, and two scores. Obviously, Rutgers having a struggle now. It becomes a three score game. And you got a new quarterback in. It was Giovanni Rochino on the last drive for Rutgers, and we'll see who it is here. Now, the game changes a little bit here. Under eight minutes to go in the third. It's a three score game. You still got plenty of time, and it looks like Rochino will be coming back out here. How does the offense need to adapt in this game for Rutgers to make it more successful? I wouldn't worry about winning. I mean, they've gone three games here where they haven't scored. Let's just try to keep things positive, keep the sticks moving, protect our quarterback, not turn it over, and try to get ourselves at least in field goal range. Be productive. Communicate, focus, get the snap, hang on to the football. And Machine Yell hands it off right through the middle to try and pound into the defensive line, which unfortunately going up against a team like Illinois, which also is looking for its first Big Ten win of the year. Most folks know the defensive line is the strongest unit of this defense with several NFL caliber players. Yeah, they, get, they got five yards. One of the things that's hard if you're Rutgers is to try to play to be productive and not just play not to make a mistake. Machino turns the edge, has the first down, stopped by Stanley Green. The freshman safety tackles the sophomore quarterback. That's part of the run game again that, that comes from Ohio State. You pick up somebody that's got a little more speed, that becomes a 50 yard play. And now run, run, run. Out to the 45 as Rutgers goes in search of a score. You go back to their game against New Mexico in game three. Three touchdowns in the second quarter of that game, and in the 17 subsequent quarters, just one touchdown for the Scarlet Knights. Trying to find answers, shuffling quarterbacks, trying to eliminate some turnovers, some drops. You got to play. You, you got to play to win, but what happens so many times in this situation, you're just trying to play not to make a mistake, and that's hard. It's it's hard to find the balance between just going and executing full throttle and I don't want to fumble. I don't want to jump off sides. I don't want to hold somebody. I don't want to have a bad snap. I don't want to drop the ball. You have a lot of those those negative things that creep into your head. Rochino sees some open room on third down and three takes advantage. Nickerson comes over from the middle linebacker spot. What a hair too late and a good scramble by the quarterback. That was a little Braxton Miller, J.T. Barrett-ish. They catch you playing with that short edge, even though the play is designed to go back the other way. They're going to catch it and beat you to the edge. Good little adjustment. And off for Goodwin. He cuts it back to the right side. And a pickup of eight there on first down. And... A mild applause from those gathered today in Scarlet and Gray here in Piscataway, New Jersey. Really good crowd, you know, for a team that's struggling. Pretty good crowd on a great sunny day. Good college football atmosphere. This has been perfect college football weather. The crowds were here well before 9 a.m. Machinio goes backwards there. Tackled again by Nelson, a guy whose name we called quite a bit here today and Hardy Nickerson and given him his first career start a couple weeks ago against Nebraska said he's done a better job than other guys especially when it comes to stopping the run which is why he's moved into a starting spot 
when you're trying to build or rebuild or establish a program competition is key at practice and games. Virginia through the middle stretching just shy of the first down line at the 40. A really awesome little wrinkle motion in the back out of the backfield. Hardy Nickerson was running out of there. They were in man coverage. Just a simple little read quarterback able to grab the ball and get back up inside. The second half it's been 10 runs no passes for Illinois. The Scarlet Knights last eight snaps have all been runs. Another high snap and it backfires again. It's the second time today in a crucial situation on a fourth down where the snap has been high and it's been a turnover on downs for Rutgers. Are you kidding me Mike Cousins? Are you kidding me? Obviously little jittery up front unable to get the snap timed up. Derek Nelson one of their mainstays they like him a lot they I talked to Chris Ash I said you know you've been at Ohio State how many of these guys and he was one of the guys he mentioned as being just a real solid veteran player for him inside. Second turnover on downs the eighth tackle for a loss by the Illinois defense. Then with a three score lead here not much incentive to start throwing the ball. Corbin gets another carry. Tonight after a full day of college football don't miss Sports Center at night with John Buchagross and Nicole Briscoe highlights and a full breakdown from the championship series on both sides of Major League Baseball college football the NHL NBA preseason NFL news and everything else from a, a busy day in sports and they're on ESPN after UCLA Washington State later tonight. Lo and behold a pass <laughs> Justin Hardy to the boundary for did not have yards. a catch last week makes his 11th of the year in a shocking development we have a pass a forward pass. <laughs> Who was the one mentioned Cumberland? Is there a forward <laughs> pass in that game? 222 to nothing. Whoa. Third down and some pressure. And the throw is too much for DJ Taylor. And it was too much for Chase Crouch. He's unable to put any sting on that ball. He just he tried to go long handoff. You know his arm right now his his right arm reminds you of remember when R.A. Dickey was photographed as a part of that uh, Olympic baseball team and somebody said hold on let's look at your contract something looks a little bit off here and his arm was hanging at just the wrong angle there and that's when they found out things weren't exactly where they should have been medically and his cross runs off the field there he doesn't extend that arm all the way down which Maybe well, you, adds a little bit to what you're seeing. Yeah, you could tell he's favoring it. When you're a right handed guy and you're drinking out of a cup with your left hand and putting your helmet on and strapping up your helmet on the opposite side with your left hand, you know you've got some issues. So, 284 yards a game for Rutgers, which is last. In the FBS and just 206 yards today. They're averaging 18 points a game as well, which is 124th out of 128 teams. As you said, the numbers are insignificant at this point as far as they pertain to where they rank in the country. It's about making progress today in the final 17 and a half minutes. They've had a few electric players here over the years. Uh, Mohamed Sanu, uh, obviously Ray Rice. And there they let Rashino air it out. He goes from the far hash to the far sideline for Andre Patton. Andre Patton, the go-to guy. That was a great throw. Threw it on time. Going to the far hash. Really good protection. Got everybody staying in. Throwing it on time. Just need 
Phil Jackson always talks about breakthrough moments. <laughs> boy, do you need him, and boy, does Rutgers need one bad. They need a big run, a big catch. They need something to spark this team. Robert Martin had the makings of one there on first down and 10. When we spoke with Drew Merringer, the offensive coordinator, yesterday, one of the things that we wanted to know was you're down in a game. How do you decide when to make the quarterback switch? Here they go from Laviano to Rashino. And the change, he said, really just comes as a feel thing. You got to know internally from having seen your team, seen your offense enough when to do it. A completion over the middle for Rutgers is a big one for Andre Patton. And on this drive, two of the best pass plays from either side we've seen today. Here we go. That might be the breakthrough. He's trying to get him hurried up. They got a little momentum, a little excitement. Now, normally they always do this after a big play, but clearly they haven't had many of those this year. And then right back to the ground for Mark. All right, inside the red zone for the Scarlet Knights. These, these sort of situations always warm the heart of the football coach up against adversity and to see your kids battle back and, and hang in there and make something happen when you've had so many negative plays. That falls in the same category. A loss of two after the tackle for a loss by Jamal Milan. Third and six. Rashino has shown the ability to throw the ball. Try and go for it again here. Well, <laughs> as much as I hate to say this, I mean, you got to at least try to get three points here. You need some points on the board. You're you're in your third game without any scores. In motion, Goodwin out of the backfield. He makes the catch. He makes the cut for a first down. And the Scarlet Knights will have a first and goal coming up inside the 10. And your voice got a little few octaves higher there. Really good play selection. Flipping the ball outside. Simple throw. All on the running back. Now we'll see if Rutgers can end the drought.
back here at High Point Solution Stadium in Piscataway, New Jersey. Rutgers coming up a first and goal from the four yard line, trying to get their first points of October and end an 11 quarter drought without having scored. Their last two games scoreless against Ohio State two games ago against Michigan last week. And the cannon. It goes off after scores. It went off last week, Hawk. But on a play, they got called back. So they want to be able to do it and do it for real. They're Scarlet fired Knights. up. They're ready to go. Here they go. First and goal from the four. Rashinho goes over the top, and the toss is there for the touchdown catch by Nick Archie Diacono. And the drop is over in Piscataway. Got him with a jump pass. Fake the quarterback run. Leap up, throw it over the line of scrimmage. Made famous back in the day by Tim Tebow at Florida and many others. And all of a sudden, just four seconds into this fourth quarter, we got ourselves a 10 point game. How about that little switch up at quarterback? Hit a couple throws. Guys get a little excitement, score a touchdown, a cannon goes off. Chris Ash is going, finally, something good happened. Going to roll out like it's quarterback run. Nick just slips out behind. Good job lobbing that thing over the top. And the cannon fired to boot. It was real. It was spectacular for <laughs> Rutgers fans as they are on the board to make it 17 to 7. Just four seconds into this fourth quarter. There's some bragging rights now. Not exactly equal in the Archie Diacono family, but if as a sports fan, the name sounds vaguely familiar. Nick's cousin, Ryan, a national champion this last year with the Villanova Wildcats basketball team, now with the Spurs in the NBA. One has a championship, and one scored the 11-quarter touchdown ending drop. And Nick also got a rebound right there. That wasn't really a pass, it was a rebound. All right, look at the kickoff team. They're swaying back and forth. The crowd is up. Smoke is in the air. The cannon is fired. And... Oh, they're going to give him the going to give him the touchback. I thought I was going to kick it out of bounds. Now Clemson in action here early today. NC State. That's over on ABC. The Tigers have won 44 straight games against unranked teams. Second longest streak in FBS, and it's close. And Clemson, uh oh, don't let the ball get loose. And that's exactly what happens right here the goal line. And the Wolf Pack have it. Clemson hasn't lost at home since 2013 against number five Florida State. And they haven't lost at home against an unranked team since 2008. Keep an eye on that game, ABC. Meanwhile, first and 10. For Illinois as they go back to work here with a 10-point lead after the touchdown by Rutgers. And back to work on the ground. They threw it a couple times in that last drive and had to end up punting. They'd scored on the previous two drives just by going straight ground pound attack. No real need for the strategy to change all too much, right? No, it largely has been working. Now we'll see if this defense has been energized by the score. And they come up and get real close to Kendrick Foster there. And now it's third and four. It's really easy when you're sitting in the second deck saying, hey, why don't those guys get fired up? And it's very much an emotional game, particularly college football. And you go that long without scoring, it's hard. You start thinking about a lot of things other than, as Bill Belichick would say, do your job.
Cox goes down in the pocket. It collapses, and there is a flag down. It looks like this is going to go against Illinois. Decline that and make it a fourth down. Legal formation. The offense. Too many players in the backfield. And it was declined. Fourth down. You said it right, Mike. It was a collapsed pocket. I don't think he actually even got tackled. The pocket was just collapsed in around him. Great push up inside. Coach Ash very fired up. And here comes an opportunity to do something for Jawan Harris. He leans his way across the 40-yard line. After the second straight three and out. Well, it's 17 to 7. Rutgers ended its drop. They can make this a one score game at home in the fourth quarter. You know, Hawk, I'm not sure why you'd ever actually dance and sing like nobody's watching, but some people, they like to do that, especially if you're a Rutgers fan when your team has scored their first touchdown. We like to do it. Quarters. We're getting pumped up in the booth. <laughs> your voice has raised up a few octaves. Hey, Monday Night Football, by the way, Jets Cardinals 815 Eastern on ESPN. Coverage starts with Monday Night Countdown, served by Applebee's at 6. Also streaming live on Watch ESPN. Here comes Rutgers. And it's a first down run, a scramble forward. Not enough to pick up a first down. It's a nine yard gain for Giovanni Rochino. Gio keeps it up. There's going to be posters going up of him around town. The day number 17 showed up. And off just to the marker there for Goodwin. And that is a first down. So the starting quarterback was Chris Laviano. It's been the last couple of games where the starter has come out. Laviano was pulled for Allen last game against Ohio State for Tylen Odin. Not necessarily surprising again for Rutgers fans to see a different quarterback. Just the fact that it's the sophomore Rochino who'd not played since the game against Howard. One yard there. 
Running that zone read with the lead blocker. A little penetration came in there. Just able to throw the timing out just a bit. Now he's able to, Gio was able to throw a couple of passes and connect when he really didn't have to. Now when he has to get, now when he has to really throw the football. And the Illini are not surprised. That's when they'll really earn his money. Here comes big time pressure. He steps up into the throw looking for Patton. And it's over his head. Artie Nickerson was coming in hot for the offensive line. Third and nine here for Rutgers. Good pressure. Great job getting the ball off. As you mentioned, Artie gave him a pretty good pop coming through the middle. I think that's one of the toughest things to do in sports and certainly in football. You've got to step up and throw a football when you know you're about to get blasted from the front. That is just very counterintuitive. Empty backfield, five wide. Got to be careful of his quarterback run out empty last time. It's a six-man rush. Rashinho gets through the first line, and he gets tackled from behind for a first down. How about that for momentum for the Scarlet Knights? Must have broke about five or six tackles to get there. It was not clean. When he first started to take off running, I was going, oh, no. Arm tackle, arm tackle, arm tackle. Able to carry his momentum. Third time he's running for a first down. A breath of fresh scarlet air. And then he gets a breather as Justin Goodwin goes between the hash marks. It's crazy what just a little energy will do. A few positive things, a few things go your way. They started off the game with the fumbled punt. Came back later with the fumble ball inside the 10. Hard to keep your spirits up when bad things keep happening. But Coach Ash said it from Monday all the way through game day. The energy has been high. The optimism has been ever present. That's just short of the first down marker for Goodwin. And there's more credit to go around here as well. Last week, it was gross. It was rainy. It was 78-0 against Michigan. You didn't expect to sell out today, but the Rutgers crowd here did not diminish after halftime. Yeah, I've done a nice job. It's not a it's not a sellout, but it's a good crowd. And once the, the Knights gave something to yell about, they got into it. Martin moving on third and one. Right to the 25. Looks like they're going to be a little short. Oh, looks like somebody's hurt as well. And that's the right tackle, J.J. Denman, who earlier recovered a fumble. As the spot stands now, it looks like it would be fourth and inches. And fourth and short situations today, Hawk, have not been the best for Rutgers. All right, first down. There you go. Well, and the case could be made, too, of going under the center. You know, we used to go always under the center when we were in short yardage and down on the goal line, even if we were a gun team. And the two snap issues they had in short yardage, and I don't know, it's just getting antsy because the defensive line is snorting and grunting up front. Or just the performance anxiety curve is a little pegged. Denman, the injured player. For Rutgers.
The Rutgers crowd and sideline with a round of applause for J.J. Denman, the redshirt senior from the Keystone State, as he is wheeled off. Hopefully, we'll be back to action soon. Depth has been an issue this year, especially on offense. Janarian Grant, one of the most electric players in the Big Ten, is out for the year. This is a guy who, especially the last couple of weeks, Hawks, weeks Hawk, they could really have used his energy. He has a tremendous amount of juice. You see the, the special teams touchdowns. And Chris Ash mentioned he thought he might be one of the best returners, if not just in the Big Ten in the country. And I would have to agree with him. But and Jabril Peppers would have to disagree with as that. as we would say <laughs> Everybody's young thin and beat up and that's part of it. You've got to have some depth and you've got to have a system that uh, Gets people in the game and gets people's reps and they can function First oh. and, ten, and it's intercepted Darius Mosley is going the other way. He's got only Rochino to beat. He does just that and it's a touchdown for Illinois Ooh, Mosley sitting all over that. Threw it right to him. 75 yards the other way. The second pick of the year for Mosley. Short, quick throw. Might have been tipped just a hair. I couldn't really tell. He just jumped right in front of that slant route. <sighs> Good effort trying to catch him, but well, and that's big. That's a momentum change there. That injury to Denman at right tackle slowed what had been a very positive drive for the Scarlet Knights, and it turns around the other way into seven points for Illinois, and it's game changing with just nine and a half minutes to go, but Rutgers gets the ball right back when we return. Seventy eight yard touchdown on the interception for Darius Mosley the cornerback for Illinois with an interception taking a 17 7 game and turning it into a 24 to 7 game Rutgers at 0 and 3 in the Big Ten Illinois at 0 and 2 as the Illini look at the clock and they say hey 932 to go 
until they can solidify, they hope, their first Big Ten win of the season after losses to Nebraska and Purdue to open up conference play this year. Kickoff fielded at the seven yard line. Coming up tonight on ABC, we'll have JT Barrett and number two Ohio State taking on number eight Wisconsin and a Big Ten clash at Camp Randall. Eight Eastern, five Pacific on ABC, also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. Not only two great defenses, but also a chance for Barrett to make some history in this one with 86 career touchdowns, only two behind Braxton Miller. So even if it doesn't happen tonight, still keep an eye on that throughout the rest of the season. It'll be later tonight, capping off a great day of college football as the Scarlet Knights are back to work here after a demoralizing end to their last drive. Trying to ride the ball is loose. Illinois says they've got it. And so do the officials. And it's Carol Phillips who fell on top of it, the defensive end, who missed the first half, coming off of a targeting penalty, back to the game, and right back to his old way. He's coming back with a fever. He had to sit in that locker room, stewing for a whole half. Great job getting on the ball, getting it out. Hardy Nickerson right up in there as well. Fifth turnover for Rutgers. Hard to win that way. And the fourth fumble they've lost as well. Trying to turn out of that. Foster really didn't have anywhere to go. Isaiah Wharton, the cornerback from the Orlando area, grabs him and doesn't let him free. Not a lot of tricks in the bag right now for Illinois. Chase Crouch with a what we're assuming is a bad shoulder with a high degree of probability given him few a talent few amount of times they've thrown it and the health status of West Lunt coming into this game for those maybe wondering perhaps where the regular starter is didn't seem to be one where it would be a long term issue Monday and Tuesday it was still in question as to whether Luck would take the field. It has been all Crouch today and all Illinois as well on the scoreboard.
Quite simply, five turnovers have been the story of the day today for Rutgers, and Illinois has been more than happy to take advantage of 24 7 here on the road in Piscataway, New Jersey. I'm Mike Cousins. He's former college football head coach Dan Hawkins, and 8 30 to play in a 17 point game. Second and 12 for the Illini. Ainsley Johnson was in the backfield there to help block for Kendrick Foster and it has not been an explosively great day for the tailback duel of Corbin and Foster, but they have been doing enough to get the job done combined with the running ability of Crouch. At the 60 plus yard catch and run by Keyshawn Vaughn, which really that in the interception, but the only offensive big play was that in the first half a 61 yard catch and run for the running back now third and 12 they send crouch on the move and his throw to the sideline is incomplete tyler white coming across the formation it was interesting to hear Jay Neiman, the defensive coordinator for Rutgers, talked about trying to scout Illinois this week. Wes Lunt, Chase Crouch being the two guys he was mentioning and saying, hey, it's tough because we don't know who's going to start. Nobody knew until about two hours before kickoff when you see Lunt out there in warm-ups. Looking forward now to the next game and for coaches that have to scout Illinois, they still may not know who's going to be the starting quarterback. Thank you. Well, and because sometimes I think people make a big deal about who's a quarterback, but here you had two dramatic differences. Wes clearly a thrower, Chase clearly a runner. He missed from 51 at the end of the first half. This drive from 41 is no good. McLaughlin has been as trustworthy as anybody over the last couple of weeks and you see a good show of support there from his long snapper Michael Martin as they come off the field because he hadn't even missed a field goal prior to last week. He was eight for nine coming into this game and he's been a very trustworthy option special teams wise for Illinois. A miss here or there certainly forgivable with a 17 point lead although his disappointment forgivable. It's forgivable because they're up by 17. No, it's never to, forgivable. To himself, I'm sure he's no. disappointed. Well, I'm sure he is disappointed, but I'll try to get some points there. Either way, I'm going to give Crouch the toughness award. Do we have a toughness award we give out we in do the now. game? Now? Yeah, the ESPN the, the, News Noon Game Toughness Award of the Week. The Mike Cousins Toughness Award of the Week. We got to get an acronym for that. That's a lot of I don't think Giovanni's going hey I was waiting for you guys to get going wait wait a minute I think they I think they were they were they were waiting for somebody to spot the ball ready for play I don't think they were they knew it was ready to go And now they are first and 15 for their own 19-yard line. The sophomore Rashinho to the flat for Archie Diacono, whose one catch earlier today was the lone touchdown for Rutgers. Now they were coming off scoreless games against Ohio State and Michigan, and the remainder of the Big Ten schedule not exceptionally friendly for the Scarlet Knights. Looking down the rest of the ledger, Minnesota coming up next. Long completion, the closest receiver to Juan Harris. You need to turn this into a, like a scrimmage situation here. Just let Giovanni get some reps. Just throw the ball, work on your protection, pitch and catch, get ready for the stretch run. Minnesota playing right now with that last check, a two score lead over Maryland. And that game next Saturday will be a noon kickoff on ESPNU. From the Twin Cities. Road trips in there. Machine showing some nice speed. 
And not enough when there's three defenders coming up quickly along the back side. And down he goes. Overestimated his speed a little bit there. But I, I, I think this is great. Just go ahead. It's like live practice right now. Live reps. Get your quarterback. Start throwing the football. They wanted to work it all day Wednesday in practice. Basically like a scrimmage and spring ball. No fair catch called for, so here we go from the 35-yard line. A little bit of excitement there for Darius Mosley. Well, last time there was kick-kick inter interference, and I think Patton thought he was going to be too close this time, and he now didn't wrap him up. Ole Miss and Arkansas in Fayetteville tonight. It's a big one with Chad Kelly and the Rebels against Austin Allen and the Razorbacks also streaming live on the ESPN app and watch ESPN. In the SEC West, Auburn has been particularly hot right now. They've won three straight. AM last week for six turnovers. Still went to overtime though. Are you buying the Aggies? In a game like that, six turnovers and did not decidedly win that game. I, I do like, I do like the Aggies. I think the defense is getting squared away. And Trevor Knight's been a good mix for them. The quarterback they are running the ball well, and they have got creatures, Mike. Creatures, <laughs> dudes. No, they got more than dudes. They got creatures. I know you're going to be doing basketball here and not too long. There's several guys there that play that they could be on the basketball team for many programs. Day Day Hall. It has been a resurgence through recruiting for Texas A&M basketball recently as well. Good effort there on the run by Corbin. To keep things moving. Five and a half minutes now to go. And a timeout taken by Rutgers. Talk not just the SEC, though. We got to talk about the Big Ten this week because they got four top ten teams for the first time during the season since 1960. The preseason poll in 99 also had four teams. We're talking about once things are all being played out on the field number two ohio state number four michigan there's still a lot of games to be played michigan is off this week you've got ohio state in action tonight eight eastern on abc between those two teams who do you like better at this point well it's tough it's tough to deny what ohio state has done in recruiting now, i know jim harbaugh has just come on the scene is doing a great job as well but and to hear urban meyer say this is his best ohio state team ever that's always a little bit <laughs> alarming. Not if you're an Ohio State fan, but if you're playing against them, that's always uh, that's always a little daunting. And when folks talk about who are their college football playoff top four teams right now, Alabama is in there, Clemson is in there, perhaps Washington is in there, and then it's a slash line. Of, well, it's either Ohio State or it's Michigan and hey, let's wait till the end of the regular season To figure out between those two or let them decide perhaps who the best team is between that pick. Well, you know how coaches are they everybody hates it. They're week to week But that's that's really how it is and there is so much football to be played and we see along the way how certain teams get tripped up or teams people thought were gonna be good drop out that's why I think it's great for the playoff committee to wait to see the body of work before they really start seeding these teams, which is great. Used to be back in the old days, and I voted on the coaches' poll, but like a team would start out really high, and they would almost have to get blown out of the water to, to leave the top 25. And you might have a good team that started low. I mean, they would almost have to create a tsunami to, to get up in the rankings. Backing it up. Looks like they're going to punt it. Send it back to the 40. 
one yard line there. I decline the penalty here. I just may think it makes it easier to get a red zone punt in here. May not be the case, but you move that ball up five yards, it makes it a little bit harder. Now it's Ryan Frame to punt. Try and practice pinning this one inside the 20-yard line. You got a good initial bounce. Oh. Nobody down there to get it before it bounced across the goal line, though. And Frayne, one of just four guys to play under four coaches at Illinois. Anthony Chaffee was down there in coverage, but he was, let's just say, eliminated. So they didn't have a lot of gunner. That was a great punt. Laid it right in there. So you mentioned the strategy here for Chris Ash and his team now down 24 to 7 inside of four and a half minutes to play. Talking about scrimmage situation. What would you want to see as the coach? Here? Throw it every down. Just get your quarterback and just start, you know, just just work on stuff. They talked about they needed to work all the Wednesday on 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 their passing game. Communication, catch the ball. Just just work on reps getting better for down the road. They've ran the ball decently. You know your quarterback can run. They want to work on this passing part of their game. And they try to do that on first down. Rochino going down the sideline for the running back, Robert Martin. Need a little bit more of a hole shot. Can't turn it over that high when you've got a safety sitting over the top. I think they're electing to. Nope. Going to put him back in the backfield. I thought they're going to go a little empty package, which they went on the first down. Second down and ten. Rochino scrambles forward to the 24-yard line, a gain of four. Third and six coming up. This offense too, as coaches come in and take over in year one, and a lot of support for Ash with a new athletic director as well, and Pat Hobbs. That's a great thing to have. Lovey Smith has it as well from. Josh Whitman, his athletic director, who we got to speak with earlier. The catch made by Patton as he moves the chains. Mosley sniffing out that one, too. He was just, he was a step farther behind than he was on the previous uh, interception for a touchdown. But it's an offensive implementation here where it's a system that at this point, for Rutgers, going up over the top, incomplete, necessarily at quarterback, right now doesn't have the guys that would best serve what they want to do schematically. Yeah, it's tough. I think you can terminology, do what you want to do, but it all starts with players. You have to do what your players can do and set it up around your players as best as possible. And that doesn't mean the terminology and those things can't, can't change. The other thing is I think your system has to be, and I want to say simple, but it has to be learnable by younger players if they're good enough to get in the game. Cuscino twirls nicely over the middle. Yeah, good Simmons shot. With his third catch of the day, he's been a very reliable target. He's a tough kid, and he's made some in-traffic catches and some difficult catches and proven the ability to get his body twisted around. Laviano stands on the sideline with Zach Allen, one of the other quarterbacks on the roster. Allen has not seen time today. Laviano did start the game. And has not seen action here as the afternoon has worn on with Rochino making his mark known, this time with Carlton Agadosi for 23 yards. It's like live team here on Wednesday. Now going up top, looking to the end zone. He wanted Agadosi again. You know what they have found quite a bit on on those deep tries, no safety over the top. Well, they're able to get him out over the edge, and they haven't been playing. Because of the running quarterback situation, they haven't been playing a ton of too high. and rotating down. Starting to see a little bit more of it on this drive. Rochino realizes he's yeah. got nobody waiting on him. And smart. heads toward the sideline where Trey Watson pushes him out. There they were playing the vaunted Monty Kiffin Tampa 2 defense. Which we showed. This crew of Lovey Smith and Hardy Nickerson. And of course Monty Kiffin down at Tampa Bay. 
quite a coaching tree. Machino's third down throw to Simmons. Jalen Dunlap waiting there to make the stop. The junior from Chicago. And it's fourth down and four on the 22. Chris Ash still coaching. He talked about the process, and that's one of the things that's really difficult, I think, in every program, every coaching. It's all about the process. But everybody wants to push the product on it, and he's really invested in the process right now. For a guy who is returning to New Jersey, you may not see this formally listed over his resume, but before he was at Drake, at the very beginning of his career, he was a restricted earnings coach for spring practice at Princeton. He made the drive over to New Jersey, got this offer from Princeton, and said, hey, look, I want to be a coach. You gotta get your foot in the door somewhere, right? And then the phone call comes from Drake. You gotta go back to his alma mater where he played from 92 to 95, and he has risen through the ranks from the Big 12 to the Mountain West and through the Big 10 as well. And the SEC has stopped there. Gotta have a moving van if you wanna be a football coach. I would put supportive wife higher than moving van, right? Well, <laughs> both of those would be critical you know you mentioned something funny as well as some things that one of those coaching axioms is when you get that first head coaching job it's not necessarily going to be a good one but you've got to make it good yeah there's a reason you're going in there because things haven't gone well so uh, that there's a reason they made a change and then you've got to be able to to, to push the ball up the hill a little bit He's got good support. First year of a five-year contract with the Scarlet Knights. Yeah, said he felt good. Thought they were giving him the things he needed to do to win and understood the process. And they're really trying to get down and to the, to the guts of everything and talked about nutrition, um, sleep habits, all those things. They're trying to get these guys to become champions and compete every day. And it's hard. You, you have a whole different culture, and it doesn't make one bad or one better. It's just a different culture the kids have to learn to adapt to. Foster on the cutback. This is a projection forward with an Illinois win, which right now is a minute and 50 seconds away. They go up to one and two. And Minnesota right now is in position for perhaps a victory as well. Playing against Maryland. They try and climb out of the basement in conference play. Rutgers would go to 0 and 4 in the Big Ten. And we talked about this very early today, Hawk, is what a difficult schedule it's been for Rutgers this year. Another breakaway there from Foster is they start off the season with currently the number five team in the nation, the Washington Huskies, which people knew they would be good, but maybe not the number five team in the country. They're at 6-0, coming off a big-time win against Oregon. And in the last two weeks, playing two stellar teams, and number two, Ohio State, number four, Michigan. It's brutal. Scheduling is really important, and how you start and getting some wins underneath your belt, particularly when you're rebuilding a program. It's... Uh, it's really critical where you play. Are you on the road? Are you home? Your travel situation? But Ash came to his media sessions earlier in the week, sent to the media somewhat jokingly. He goes, look, you guys are the experts. You predicted two and four through six games. And, and that's a fair assessment of where things were with a win against Howard, a win against New Mexico. And unfortunately, too many turnovers to be able to pull this one out today, 24-7 as Lovey Smith and the Fighting Illini go on the road. They'll improve to 2-4, and 1-2 and two in the Big Ten, and Rutgers with a loss down to 2-5 and 0-4 and oh and in conference play. But they managed to score. I think they found a quarterback. All those things are good. And one more shot of the cannon to finish things off from Piscataway, New Jersey. Thanks so much for being with us here this afternoon. Plenty more college football coming your way. 
ESPN Goal Line follows us here on ESPN News. So, for my partner, Dan Hawkins, and on behalf of our entire ESPN crew, here in the Garden State, I'm Mike Cousins, reminding you it's 24-7 Illinois over Rutgers and saying so long from New Jersey.